We are not putting our fellow Kiwis at risk, and we are not crazy people. We have a nuanced position. We don't believe lizard people are pushing COVID, okay, or any of the 5G nonsense they try and paint us as. But people are free to believe what they want to believe, and people are free to question the government narrative, and we have plenty of evidence on which to do so. Plan B, the Plan B team at Auckland University, Victoria University, people like Simon Thornley, they have questioned the lethality rate. They have questioned the lockdowns. Japan has not locked down. Japan has 100 million people more densely populated than New Zealand. No lockdowns, better economic prosperity, better health and safety. Why don't we follow their model instead of strawmanning Sweden or London or going on about Trump? You know, I'm no expert, I don't claim to be, but I can look up a study, such as a 2017 Otago University study that showed over 62% of Kiwis over 50, that's the at-risk age bracket, lack adequate vitamin C for healthy uh, immune function. So why is something as simple as that that could be sold by a 50 cent kiwi fruit not promoted by the caring, loving Jacinda Ardern? That's just vitamin C. We need vitamin C, D from the sun right now, and zinc for healthy, the building blocks of a healthy immune system. Why don't we have public health experts who encourage New Zealanders to eat better diets? What's the downside of that? We have a healthier population. So they don't really care about health, guys. They don't really care. You scratch the surface of these loving, caring people, and you find cold-faced tyrants. They want power, they want control, and they want to push the average Kiwi into a pen. And right now, so many of our fellow peers, people I know and love, are trying to push me into a pen too, and it's disgusting. They're going along with this propaganda. It's facile, and anyone with half a brain should be able to see through it. So once again, this is not about putting the public at risk. None of us are going to die here. Apparently there are 2,000 plus people in the square under level two protesting the Black Lives Matter movement. No cases were contracted from that, no deaths. So why now when a bunch of people with different politics protest is it all of a sudden dangerous? We have a right and duty, a civic duty to our ancestors to uphold the hard fought freedoms we have. Yeah. We know that any incursions of the state upon our freedom are never temporary. No government plan is ever temporary. The police will not cede these rights given to them. They will not willingly do it or voluntarily do it, that's for sure. And so we have to keep them in check. In a democracy, the only check on government is the people. And if the people are not informed and aware and exercising their liberties, then democracy crumbles into tyranny. And that's what we're seeing right now. I'd go further and say we need a binding, a binding constitution that cannot be alienated by any uh, subsequent act. We need a constitution which every Kiwi can understand that enshrines us with unalienable rights the right to not be medicated, the right to not be vaccinated, the right to not be penned up in our homes. These are not unreasonable demands from crazy people. These are well-reasoned historic presidents that protect free people from tyrants. So I'll hand you over to Jonathan here shortly, but I'd like to say, when the government fears the people, there's liberty. When the people fear the government, there is tyranny. And most Kiwis right now are in fear of their government. They're acting out of fear. And the government know that fear is a hugely powerful force to control people. But living in fear is toxic to your immune system, to your friends, to your family, and, and not least of all to our businesses. Let me end on an economic point. We've got 13% of mortgage holders who are defaulting on their mortgage payments. Australia is close to 30 or 40% of renters or mortgage holders who can't make next month's payment. That's where we're heading in the coming months. And we can't print or borrow and spend our way out of this problem. We're losing $500 million a week in the city. 
That's a billion dollars in the last fortnight. That's a billion dollars of wealth that has disappeared, gone. Goods and services this country doesn't get. That's going to drive more people into poverty, and that's going to lead to poverty-related illnesses, bankruptcy, suicides, depression, and all the rest of it. We can't let this go on. We can't just keep going into lockdowns indefinitely. Thanks, guys. Let's have a great peaceful day in the sun, and uh, hope to see you soon.